Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so we've implemented a generic, we've, well, we've implemented a stack structure that can uh, hold any element type, right? So we've basically implemented a generic stack. Now, the reason, the way we did this is that um, the stack ended up holding pointers uh, to the elements on the stack, right? So it doesn't hold the elements themselves. The problem with this approach is that you have to be very careful when you use this thing. Right. So in our previous stack or list that held, um, they're basically collections of int. You could just push an int onto the stack or add an int to a list and everything would work fine. Now that you're holding pointers to stuff, you have to make sure that the elements actually exist after you push the thing onto the stack. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you exactly what happens um, if you, uh, or exactly what could happen if you use this thing incorrectly. Right. So our uh, structure is called our generic structure, I think, is called stack, right? So the first thing you're going to do if I want to use stack is include the header file, right? So include the header file for the stack uh, structure so that I can actually use it. Now remember, uh, so I'm going to want to print the stack, right? And so remember, to print the stack, uh, the stack needs to know how should it print out the elements. So we have to provide a function, uh, uh, sorry, we have to provide a pointer to a function that can actually print the element types, right? So we need one of these things here. Right. Now remember, this is a pointer to a function that returns nothing, takes in a pointer to an uh, takes in a pointer to an element, and prints the element. Right. So this is uh, we need something that can print, uh, and I want to use ints in this case. So we need something that can print print an int. So I need to provide a function that I can actually print an int. So make one up, print int. It takes in const uh, void star. E oh, sorry, uh, star elam. Right, so this thing here prints out an element, uh, prints out an element assuming that it's an int, right? So we're going to assume that this pointer actually points at an int, right? And so we're just going to use printf to print the element. Um, the only wrinkle you have to deal with here is that you've got a pointer uh, instead of an actual int, right? So to get the int value, I have to do something like uh, the following. So I need to dereference the pointer. Uh, sorry, right? Uh, but the other thing I need to do is I have a pointer uh, to const void, right? And I, what I need to do is I need to get a pointer to int. So I actually have to cast the pointer uh, to a pointer to int here in order to in order to dereference the pointer, right? And so in other words, I need to do a cast of elem, right? And so what I want to cast elem to is I want to cast it to a pointer to int, right? So I want to cast to uh, const uh, int star, like that. Do, 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 right, so take my, take my pointer to void, right, cast it to an int, or a pointer to int, and then dereference the pointer, and that gives me the uh, underlying, that gives me the uh, int object that's being pointed at, right, and now I can print it using printf. Like that, right. So we, the user of the, uh, of the structure, if they want to print out the stack, has to provide a function that looks, that resembles this. Okay, so in the main function, we're gonna make a stack. Right, and so remember, how do you make a stack? Well, you call one of the initialization functions. So I'm just gonna call stack init. Right, and that's gonna return a, sorry, pointer to a stack. Right, so I'll call my stack s, and I'm just to call the function like that. Right, now I'm going to push an int onto the stack, right? Now remember, I need pointers to int, so let's make up an int. So we're going to make, we're going to push a one onto the stack, right? So I'm going to do stack push, right? So onto the stack S, I'm going to push, I want to push I, but I have to push a pointer to I instead, right? So address I, like that. Right, right again, remember that our stack holds uh, pointers to stuff. So it needs a pointer to something here, right? Uh, we can pass in a pointer to anything with our stack. We want a stack of int, so we're passing in a pointer to an int. And now I can print the stack, right? So stack print uh, s and our function. So now it needs a pointer to a function that can print an int. So that's just print int. Like that, right? Uh, right, right. If you're, if you're not happy pass passing in just the function itself, Right, you can always take the address of the function, right? And that makes it clear that it's a pointer to a function now. 
right? But you're not required. If I've done everything correctly, this should compile and run. So GCC, well, I've got it back here. Okay, so let's see what happened here. So unknown type, that's fine, we can deal with that. Uh, it even tells you you need to include this, right? Uh, so we should probably include that. We've got a problem up here, so we'll deal with that in a second. So let's fix our first problem. So it wants me to include standard def because it doesn't know what size t is. So recompile. All right, so implicit declaration of function printf. Oh, so now it's complaining it doesn't know what printf means uh, is, so it wants me to include standard IO. So let's do that. Here. Okay, and now there's a linker error. L, so if you don't remember, LD is the um, GNU linker. Uh, it's complaining that it doesn't know what stack push or stack print is, right? Now this is a, this is a, oops. So this program is made up of more than one source code file, right? So it's made up of, where to go? Stack, 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 stack demo int, right? So there's the function that contains, the, there's the program, sorry, that contains the main function, right? But don't forget that we're actually using the stack type itself. Right, so we're actually using stack.c as well. So one way to solve this problem is to also compile stack.c at the same time, like that. Right, the other way to deal with this is to compile stack.c separately, right? And so the way you do that is with the minus c option. So minus c will compile a source code file, but it won't produce an executable, right? That's what we want because stack.c doesn't have a main function in it. So you can't make an executable program out of it anyway. So I can compile it separately, that works. And then when I compile the other program, right, I just tell it what the object file is, right, what the compiled version of stack is, right? And so I can just pass that in as on the, on, on the command line as well. And if I've done everything correctly, there we go, right? And now we can run demo, right? And it looks like it works, right? Print out top one, I guess it doesn't print it out super nicely, right? So I guess I should go fix my print function, but anyway. Um, you get top one bottom. So that seems to work, right? So notice, right, once again, we need a pointer to an int here. Okay, so that seems to work. Now the problem in C is, is you can write a little program and it'll seem to work. But as soon as you try to do something a little more complicated, like the following, so I'm just gonna write a little function f. Uh, sorry, it doesn't take in an int. Oh yeah, sure, let's do it this way, x. Okay, so I wanna write a function that pushes a value onto a stack. Right, so this is gonna push something related to x onto the stack s, right? So I'm gonna compute a new value y. It doesn't matter, right, this is just a, for an example, right? So for example, I'm gonna add one to x, right? And now I wanna push y on top of the stack, right? So I'm gonna call push, uh, and now I need the address of y. Right, and then it finishes. So we'll try to call our function now. Uh, so f, s, and then, I don't know, wait, two? Sure, so we'll push the three onto the stack, right? And now we'll print the stack again. Right, so once again, we got a function, right? Takes in a stack and an int, computes something using the int, and then pushes the computed by, uh, com pushes the, a pointer to the computed value onto the stack, right? Call the function, print the stack. So go back, recompile our program, right? Run the demo, right? Looks like it works, right? So it actually looks like, uh, so this actually looks like it does something uh, interesting. Sorry, just a second here. Uh, I want to change the print function so that it actually prints out something nicer. So comma space. All right, so that seems to work. We get a three on top of the stack. All right, so once again, our little test program appears to work. Does anybody see what the problem is here? Anybody, anybody? 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 Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, so Y has automatic storage, right? So it lives only as long as this function lives for, right? So when you push an address, uh, when you push a pointer to Y onto the stack, that pointer is no longer guaranteed to be valid after this function returns, right? Because Y gets destroyed, or potentially gets destroyed after this function returns, right? And so that technically there shouldn't work, right? Or possibly does not work, right? Now the problem in C is this is undefined behavior, and undefined behavior means anything could happen. In this particular example, it works, right? Until you do something else. So call f again, and then print the stack again. Uh, print. Oh, sorry. And now we've got four and four on the stack, right? Instead of four, three, one, right? So now you've got incorrect behavior, right? All of this is being caused by the fact that you push the address of a variable that has automatic storage onto the stack, right? After this function returns, there's no guarantee that Y exists anymore, right? So the address of Y, sorry, so the address of Y is not necessarily, val is not a valid pointer, right? And now you get undefined behavior, right? But notice that if your testing isn't particularly thorough, right, uh, do, 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 right, it appears to work, right? So the, uh, but after, so when we called F just once, right, we actually got a correct result, right? We got three and one on the stack. Sorry, right here, right? And it's not until you do a little bit more testing that you realize that there's a problem, right? So when you use this thing, right, you have to be extremely careful that the pointers you're pushing onto the stack actually point at a valid object, right? In this case, Y has automatic storage, so it's no longer a valid object after you return from the function, right? And so that line right there, uh, is, uh, will, e will end up causing problems eventually, right? So what is the solution, right? You have to make sure that this does not have automatic storage. What is the answer? You have to malloc memory to hold that value, right? So I need a pointer, uh, right, that can hold uh, one int, uh, sorry, that can hold a value. Sorry, I need an array of size one, right? That can, so I malloc size of, right? So I have to dynamically allocate memory to hold the int, right? I now have to copy the value of y into the object that p points at, right? And now I can push p onto the stack like that, right? And now when I run the program, Hey. Sorry. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Implicit declaration. Oh, include standard lib. Sure, let's do that. So let's do that. Okay, and now run the demo. Right, and now you get the correct behavior. Right. Now you have a second problem. So what's the second problem? Anybody in? Yeah. Yeah, right, so you malloc memory here, right, and nowhere in our program did we free the memory associated with that, um, uh, with that malloc, right? There's no corresponding call uh, to free every time we call f, right? Now, fortunately, our stack knows how to deallocate itself Right? But if you wanted to deallocate the elements, you have to provide it a pointer to a function that can deallocate the elements. Right? And so that's what uh, this thing is for. The function is not complicated at all. You just free the element in this particular case. Right? I'm just freeing an int, a dynamically allocated int, so I can just free the memory. Right? If you have a structure, or if your elements are structures of some kind, 
freeing the structures could be more complicated. Right? So you really should free the stack. And uh, this time it's uh, free int like that. Ugh. Recompile. Run. Oh, invalid pointer. That's interesting. What I do? Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, it's good that I ran it because there's probably something buggy in my stack implementation somewhere. Free int. Do, 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 do. That's fine. And that's fine as well, right? Okay, it's good that I did this. So let me, uh, I'm not going to debug the code here. There's a problem somewhere in our stack implementation. I have to hunt it down. Um, that's what that's complaining about there. So it's good that I did this. Um, so I'll hunt it down and t t uh, let you know what's going on in the next class. All right, so. Okay, so remember here, so when you're using this thing, right, so if you're implementing a data structure and you're storing pointers to stuff in the data structure, Right? You have to make sure that the pointers are pointing at valid objects. Right? If you don't, you're going to run into problems at some point. Right? Okay, so that's all I want to say about um, uh, about the generic uh, about generic data structures. Right? And so in implementing the thing in implementing the generic data structures, right? There were a lot of new techniques that we ended up using. Right? So we ended up um, learning about pointers to functions, right? You ended up uh, learning about how to use uh, a void pointer so that it can point at anything, right? Uh, you learned about dynamically allocating memory. You learned about um, freeing memory. You saw how to print stuff, which is really awkward, right? Um, and there's probably other things that I don't remember off the top of my head, right? So there's a lot of things going on in implementing this data structure. Um, you should not be surprised on the exam that you're going to see something related uh, to a data structure type problem, right? You're going to be asked about a pointer to a function. You're going to be asked about, you could be asked about what happens if you push an int onto this, or you push a, sorry, you could be asked about what happens when you push y onto the stack in this case, right, and things like that. So those have all been past exam questions. All right, anybody have any questions about uh, the data structure stuff? or generic data structures, pointers to functions, or anything like that. Okay, so today's lecture um, is about strings. Um, now, strings in C are just arrays of car, right? And so basically, this is more or less um, another uh, application of arrays. If you've been reading the notebooks, there's actually a notebook called um, Implementing a String Type that tries to implement, or, well, it does implement a um, small string type, right? So it implements a string that looks a lot like a Java or a Python string, right? You don't have to worry about, well, it takes care of uh, allocating the memory for the string. You can join strings together and all sorts of things, right? You can also do these things with a plain old C string, but it's a lot more, um, it's inconvenient if you're used to, um, a Python or Java style string, right? So strings in all languages, not all languages, strings in most languages, um, they're basically some sort of sequence of integer values, right? The integer values, they map onto characters, right? And so the mapping is called an encoding scheme, right? And there's a bazillion of these, right? There's many, many, many encoding schemes. In North America, uh, the old common one was ASCII or extended ASCII, right? Uh, and that has since been uh, replaced by one of the UTFs, uh, so UTF-8 or UTF-16. UTF-16 is what's used by Java. Um, I don't know what Python uses by default, right? If you move to a different country, you could end up with a different character encoding, right? If you're on Linux, you can use locale to find out what encoding your computer is using or sorry, what encoding your operating system is using. Okay, so for our purposes, C strings are just arrays of car, right? So I've told you this already. This isn't completely true because the language lets you represent characters in many different ways, 
right? So you can represent a character using char or int or something called w char underscore t, right? That's wide character, right? Char 16 or char 32 and any other integer type is, uh, is potentially usable to represent char, right? The language doesn't actually say which is the, uh, which is the standard one. When most C programmers talk about car though, talk about plain C strings, they mean arrays of car, right? W car and car 32, these are the ones that you use um, if you were trying to uh, represent, um, if you're trying to represent an encoding for many, many, many symbols, right? So for example, if you're trying to represent the encoding of all possible written languages, right, you'd have to use one of the wider character types. Right? There aren't enough, in the, there aren't enough unique car values uh, to represent all printable symbols in every possible language. Right? Uh, that's what UTF-16 and 32 are for. Okay, now C also doesn't have a separate string type, right, which is really weird if you come from Python or Java, right? It's just arrays of characters, right? Use arrays of car. Uh, I guess if you're programming in, in an internationalized program, you'll be using arrays of this thing called w car underscore t, right? You're going to be using strings a lot in your program. You're going to use a library of some kind uh, to manipulate the strings. Your string functions are going to have uh, different versions of the functions to handle the different types of character encodings, right? So if you're using arrays of car, there'll be functions that take in arrays of car, right? If the library can also handle uh, other types, there will be functions corresponding to the other types. Right, so the standard library has function corresponding to strings of car and strings of w car underscore t. Right, we're only interested in the ones uh, that operate on strings of car. The other wrinkle with C strings is that you have to remember because they're just arrays, right, and the original C, the design of the C language says that C does not keep track of the size of the array, you need some way to indicate the end of the string. Right, so there's no way to record the length of a string anywhere, right? And so that's why it has to use this null terminator character to indicate the length end of the string, right? Had the language been designed so that arrays knew their own length, right? You potentially would not need this uh, null terminator character, right? Potentially. Because it's just a plain old array, right? You can have as many of these null terminators in the array as you want. The first null term terminator indicates the end of the string, right? But you can have as many of these um, as there are spaces in the array, right? And finally, again, arrays are just uh, a sequence of elements, right? So you can make an array of car and not null terminate it, right? So the last element or, or the end of the quote unquote string is not backslash zero. If you have one of these arrays, and they do have legitimate uh, uses, right, you can't safely use this as a C string, right? So you can't pass this to one of the standard library functions that takes in a string. Okay, so the size of a string in C, the size of a string is the size of its array. The length, oh, right, the size of a string in C is the size of its underlying array, right? So here, the size of S is 16. The length of the string is the number of characters before the first null character, right? So the length of S here is three, right? So the size of uh, this size of S is 16, right? Length is three, right? You can shift the, zero, the backslash zero anywhere you want, right? So if you move the backslash zero to the front, the length of your string becomes zero, right? If you move it to between the A and the B, it becomes one. If you move it to between the B and the C, it becomes two. Okay, double quoted stuff. So a double quoted uh, sequence of characters is a string literal, right? So it's a string that you can write down. Right? You don't put the null terminator in a string literal. Well, you don't have to put the null terminator in, right? The compiler adds one for you, right? Now someone asked a question at the end of class the other day uh, that was related to this. If you write down a string literal, the literal, uh, the compiler is allowed to store the literal in what's called read-only memory. Right, so it can store it somewhere in your program where you're not allowed to modify the contents of the string, right? So what that means is if you write down a string literal somewhere 
and you take a pointer to that literal. Right? If you try to dereference the pointer and change one of the characters in the string, it could be the case that you end up with a segmentation fault. Right? You'll, get a warning, you'll get an error saying that you're trying to write into read-only memory. Right? So if you make a string literal in C, you can't actually, you, there's no guarantee that you can safely change it. Right? You can't safely change the characters in the string, even though it's just a plain old array of car. Right? So you have to be a little bit careful about that. All right, so there's my string ABC. Its length is three, right? If you print out the size of the array, it's going to be four, right? Because there's a null terminator here that you don't see, right? So size of the, so size of the array is four. The length of the string is three, right? There is a weird string that has a null terminator somewhere in the middle of it. Size of S2 is one, two, three. That's all one character, so that's four, five, six, seven plus the null terminator at the end, that's eight, right? And then the length of the string is, in this case, three, right? One, two, and three, and then null terminator. Uh, a few weeks ago, I told you, be very careful when you use size of on an array, right? It only works if the array is uh, a local array, right? So if it's local to the function itself. It's not, so if you've got a pointer to something, uh, point of will not give you the correct size, right? It returns the size of the uh, the size of the pointer, right? Which is uh, on this machine, it's always what is it? It's always eight on here. So there's an example right there, right? If you get a pointer to something, right? So in other words, if you've got a string that's passed into a function somewhere inside the function, you try to do size of uh, that string, right? It won't work, right? So be very so if you want the size the length of a string, right? Remember to always use string length. Right? If you need the size of the array, pass in the size of the array. Right? There's no way to get it uh, in a pointer. So most of the, all, most? Most of the string functions uh, are defined in string.h in the standard library. Right? And so if you click on that link there, it'll take you to the documentation um, for, the, uh, for, the string for the part of the library that defines the string functions. All right, so we're just going to look at not all of them. We're just going to look at a, a few of the more commonly used uh, string functions. All right, if you look in the string book, the one that talks about implementing a string, uh, it will actually show you the implementation of many of these functions. Right? Sorry, it'll, give, it'll show you an implement, a possible implementation of many of these functions. Okay, so string length. So that's the, a function that tells you how many characters are in a string. String must be null terminated, right? If it's not null terminated, then the uh, function, at a minimum, will return. Well, uh, sorry, then the function has undefined behavior. Right. One of the big problems with using strings in C is that if you need the length of a string, right, the only way that the language can figure out the length of a string is it has to look at the elements of the array until it finds the null terminator. So finding the length of a string in C is O n, right? It's in O n where n's the length of the string, right? In uh, like Java or Python, the string type holds the size of the string, right? The length, sorry, the string types hold the length of the string, right? So it's always O one in those languages, right? In C, it's always O n. So if you write a function that repeatedly calls string length, uh, your function is probably going to have very poor performance. Uh, so you can imagine how this thing works, right? So to find the length of a string, you're going to iterate over the characters of the string until you find the null terminator, right? In C, there's a lot of ways to write this function, right? So the obvious way, right, is you treat your string as though it were an array, right? And then you use the array notation, right, to look for the null terminator, right? So i is going to be the length of my string, so it's going to start at zero. You just look at character i, or the character at index i of the string, right? If it's not the null terminator, you know that uh, you have to add one to the length of the string, right? So add one to i, right? And repeat the process, right? After that loop is finished running, you've got the length of the string, right? Now notice what happens here if your string is not null terminated, right? 
So if your string's not null terminated, this condition here is never true until the loop reaches some memory location where the value happens to be all zeros, right? So this will run off the end of the array or potentially will run off the end of the array, right? Until it finds something that's all zeros, right? If it runs off the end of the array and that ends up being in memory you're not supposed to be looking at, you'll end up with a segmentation fault, right? And so this will barf somewhere. If you're lucky, somewhere in your array there is a chunk of memory that's all zeros, right? And this will stop, but it'll possibly give you the wrong answer. Right? If you're really unlucky, this gives you the right answer some of the time, so that when you test your program, um, you end, it looks like the function's correct, but in actuality it's not. Right? So to look for that null terminator, there's many ways you can write this loop. Right? So here's another, uh, here's another uh, way to do this. Right? This one is confusing when you look at it. Right? It's the exact same code. All that I'm doing is changing that the, uh, the array dereference there. S sorry, the uh, indexing into the array here. Right, and so if you look at that, you say, well, what on earth is that, right? So what this is doing is the following, right? So, uh, so there's two operators here. There's a dereference operator here, right? And then there's plus plus, right? So to decipher this thing, you actually need to know what is the order of operations of these operators, right? Does the dereference happen first, right? Or does the plus plus happen first, right? If the plus plus happens first, what on earth does plus plus actually do, right? And so uh, to just uh, understanding what exactly this is trying to do um, uh, really tests your knowledge of how the language defines these operators, right? And so when you encounter something like that, that you don't really understand, right? You have to go and do a little bit of research. So you want to do C uh, order. Uh, you want the operator precedence, right? Hopefully you find a reasonable reference for this. Okay, so when you look at the precedence operators, right? Precedence one, so these have the highest precedence, right? You see that plus plus and minus minus, right? Uh, these are all in precedence category one. Right, so they, they, in other words, they have the same precedence as calling a function. Uh, where are the parentheses? Uh, function call, is that right? Uh, anyway, uh, they have the highest precedence of, of all the operators, right? So they're in this group here, which all have equally high precedence, right? Notice that the dereference operator right there is in category two, so it happens second. And so when you look at this thing, it's string plus plus first, and then star, right? And it's the string plus plus part here that's confusing because a lot of programmers, even very experienced ones, or people who've been programming for a long time, don't actually know what plus plus does, right? So str plus plus, what does it do? So it, it ends up doing two things, right? So that's the thing with this thing. So str++ produces a value. Right, so in other words, when you evaluate this thing, it generates a value, right? So it produces the value, does anybody know what it produces the value of? Sorry? String plus one, right? No. <laughs> it doesn't, it produces the value str, right? Plus plus str generates, produces the value string plus one. So that produces the value str, right? So in your code, right, that evaluates to str, right? Then, step two, right? Oops, then update string to string plus one, right? So this is called post increment, right? The post tells you that it, uh, it does the update second, right? Pre-increment tells you that it does the update first, right? So, updates str to str plus one, then produces the value str. 
Uh, so that's why they're called pre and post increment. Right? So that thing produces the value str, which is just a pointer. Right? And then it dereferences the pointer. Right? So that gives you the character that str is pointing at. Right? The pointer, uh, so the thing coming in is an array of car. Right? str is presumably a pointer to the first character in the array. Right? So that lets you look at the first character of the array. Right? Is it the null terminator? No. Right? Increment i by 1. Right? Next time through the loop, str is pointing at the second character in the array. Right? Dereference that. Right? Is, that, is the second character the null terminator? No. Right? Increment i by 1, and so on, and so on, and so forth. Right? You will, if you're looking, you won't often see code like this written by, um, or sorry, I think you should probably avoid writing code like this, right? Uh, although you will see it uh, occasionally. Right? Uh, if you write code like this, you should probably put in a comment, right, indicating uh, that what's going on here. Right? That's a little bit cryptic for, uh, that's a little bit more cryptic than most programmers are going to be comfortable reading. Right? And again, you can write this in a completely different way. So I can use a for loop instead, right? So I've got my uh, loop variable s, which is just a pointer to car, right? I'm going to set that equal to str, so it's going to be the same pointer as str, right? Each time through the loop, right? But remember, this is your loop uh, up, sorry, this is the loop termination condition, right? So if that thing is true, the loop runs. If that thing is false, the loop uh, stops. Right? It gets tested every time at the beginning of the loop. Right? So star s, right, that dereferences s and looks at the value in the array. Right? So remember in C, uh, any non-zero value is true. Right? So as long as that thing is not zero, this loop runs. Right? When it hits the null terminator, the null terminator, its value is numeric zero, the loop stops. Right, so this thing just increments s. It just moves s one character down the array until it hits the null terminator. Right, that's all that that's doing. Right, now you need the number of characters that it's moved. So now you can take the pointer difference. Right, so s minus str, where s and str are pointers, computes the distance between, or the number of elements between the pointers. Right, and so that's the length of your string there. Right? And you can go on and on and on and on, right? So there's many, many, many ways you can write uh, this loop. Okay, so string copy is the, so remember that uh, strings are just arrays, right? There's no way to copy, if you use the assignment operator, uh, the assignment operator doesn't work with arrays, right? So you cannot assign one array to another array. That means you can't assign one string to another string. So the, uh, so if you want to copy a string, you have to, sorry, either write your own function to do it or, right? So string copy copies the null terminated string pointed at by a source, src, right? Copies it into the str null, null terminated string, uh, oh, sorry, pass, sorry, copies it into the array pointed at by dest, right? If dest isn't big enough to hold the string, Undefined behavior, right? If the strings overlap, undefined behavior, right? If that's not a valid pointer, or if SRC is not a valid pointer, undefined behavior, right? So um, you can see here that all the standard library, not all, most of the standard library functions are written in a way that they really don't do any error checking, right? The assumption here is that the caller has passed in an appropriate uh, has passed in an appropriate null terminated string, and has passed in an array that's large enough to hold a copy of the string, right? If the user has not satisfied these requirements, right? In other words, if they have not satisfied the prerequisites of the function, anything can happen, right? Again, notice the difference between a language like Java or Python, right? Where typically those languages, uh, where the libraries for those languages, will detect these sort of errors throw an exception if such a, uh, in the, oh, an exception circumstances, right? The philosophy between the programming languages is very, right? The C philosophy is the programmer knows what they're doing, right? The Java and fees are more 
or conservative, right? Perhaps the programmer doesn't know exactly what they're doing. Maybe we should check for errors. Okay, so how do you implement this thing? Well, you're just going to copy the elements from one array into another array, right? So you just need a loop of some kind. Right, how many characters are you going to copy? Well, I'm going to copy characters until I hit the null terminator, right? And then I'm going to copy the null terminator as well. Right? So I'm going to loop over the characters of SRC, copying the characters of SRC into dest, right? Uh, until I find the null terminator in SRC, right? And then we'll add the null terminator uh, to destination as well, right? To make sure that uh, dest is also a null terminated string. So starting, notice that I have to declare i outside the loop because I'm going to use it after the loop, right? So i is declared here, it gets set to zero here, right? i is going to be my loop counter, so it's just the index of the character in SRC, right? So as long as the character in SRC is not the null terminator, go ahead and copy the ith character from SRC into the ith location in dest, right? Now the loop stops when it sees the null terminator, right? So we have to copy the null terminator as well, right? The null terminator, though, after the loop runs is simply at position i. So I can simply copy the null terminator at, uh, from uh, the ith location of SRC into the ith location in dest, right? String copy is a bit funny. It also returns uh, the pointer uh, dest, right? Uh, the reason it does this is so that you can chain a bunch of function calls. Right, so you can copy a string into dest, right, and then you can write another, f uh, you can call another function here in front of string copy, also passing in dest, or passing in, sorry, the result of string copy. Oh, so here's, uh, here's that plus plus again, right, so here's the dereference post increment trick again, right, so here, uh, oh, this one's, that one combines that trick plus the second thing that happens in C, right? So save, right? String copy says that it returns a pointer. Uh, it returns the pointer uh, dest, right? So I need to, in this case, I'm going to manipulate dest. So I'm going to move dest around so it points at other things. So I need to remember what was the original value of dest, so that I can return it over here, right? Notice the loop, right? This loop looks strange, right? Um, it should look strange to you, right? That does not look like a condition, right? That's an assignment operator right there, right? And hopefully by this point in your programming uh, career, um, this throws off a bunch of red flags, right? Normally you would expect equals equals to be here or not equals or something else, right? So one of the comparison operators, right? But it turns out this loop does in fact work. So what's going on here? So we've got our post increment and uh, dereference thing going on here, right? So remember what this is going to do, right? So this is going to give me the value of dest, and then we're going to dereference it, right? So first time through the loop, this is the first element of dest, right? Same over here, right? First time through the loop, this is the first element of source, right? That's assignment. Right, so we're going to copy the first element of source into the first element of dest. Right, now what does, so the question is, is does assignment produce a value in C? The answer is yes, assignment produces a value in C. So this actually evaluates to something, right, this whole thing here, right? So something, assign a value to something, right? So in C, the value of an assignment expression is the value of X after the assignment has occurred, right? So when you write x equals y, that actually produces a value. It's whatever the new value of x is, right? So here, whatever the new value, uh, whatever the character that I just copied from source is, right, is the value of this expression, right? Remember in C, right, any non-zero value is true. So as long as whatever source is pointing at is not zero, this loop runs and copies a character from source into dest. Right? When that value is zero, the copy still happens, right? So the assignment happens, right? But the loop stops after the assignment happens. So this runs 
copies, until it sees the null terminator, copies the null terminator into dest and then stops. Right? And so that's what that does there, right? Notice that the loop body is empty because all the work that you needed to do was done up here. Right? Technically in Java, assignment produces the same value, right? So assignment in, in Java produces the value of the left-hand side after the left-hand side has been assigned to. You can't use that in a, as a condition in Java, right? Uh, unless the variable you're assigning to is a Boolean, right? Because in Java, uh, all the conditions have, uh, are, all conditions must be of type Boolean, right? Here in C, it's of type, uh, in this case, it's of type car. But because C considers anything non-zero to be true, uh, anything zero to be false, this works, right? What time is it? All right. So string copy is needed because you can't copy arrays via assignment, right? So here S is equal to the string hello, right? I can copy hello into S, everything's fine, right? Error on the next line. So if I want to make a new string, it's just an array. So if I try to make an array T and assign it S, that doesn't work. Right, so that bars. So that's why you need string copy in this case. Right, you need to make an array that's big enough to hold the copied string, then you have to copy the string. Right. Do, 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 do. do I actually need this? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna show, should I show you this now? I'm not gonna show you, I'll show you this in the next class. So I'm gonna talk about this function, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not supposed to use this function. Right, so there's a slide two, two slides later that tells you don't use this function, right? Uh, but it's useful for you to know because a lot of these types of functions exist in the language. Uh, so we'll call it quits there and we'll uh, pick up the lecture um, on Thursday. <laughs>